Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Joni Ogg, and on behalf of TravelProfessionalNews.com, on HomeBasedTravelAgent.com, and FindAhostTravelAgency.com, I want to welcome all of you to today's webinar, and I really do appreciate your taking the time out of your day to be with us. Our host today is a really good friend of mine, somebody and a colleague that I've known for years, um, Chad Bird, who is the co-owner of OutsideAgents.com. And we've known each other so many years, but I've had the pleasure of hosting Chad on several panels at industry events and things, and he is super fun and very engaging. Um, so it's really going to be a great presentation, I know that. So I asked Chad, um, he's a jokester all the time, and I asked him to share a brief bio with us. Um, so here's what he gives me. He claims to have been a terrible employee. Um, a, he's a fierce competitor and natural nurturer, so he knew entrepreneurship was his only hope. He started his first business in fourth grade. Oh, my God. And he's built numerous enterprises around his passions, which include education, improv, cars, family, creativity, technology, and, of course, travel. So today, as co-owner of America's premier host agency, OutsideAgents.com, He's able to pursue all of his passions for a living and from marketing to technology. And he is a guru when it comes to technology and everything in between. He simply loves being an entrepreneur and nurturing others of a kindred spirit. So today's webinar is going to be super great. It's going to be um, the topic is, OK, so now what? So this will be interesting. And two lucky attendees are going to win prizes today. Um, there will be one a one-hour consultation with Chad or Steve, who is the co-owner um, of Outside Agents, and another NT attendee will win a complimentary copy of R, the OGS, a family's newest book, Digital Marketing in the Travel Industry. So be sure to listen carefully for your chance to win. So I know so many of you have been with us before, and you know that you're muted during the presentation, but we do welcome your questions. And you can just keyboard those in um, on the right-hand side of your screen that you see or the panel that you see there. And when the presentation is all over with and chat's finished, we're going to take as many questions as we can get to, and then we're going to award the prizes. So right now, I'm going to turn the microphone over to my friend so he can get started. Welcome, Chad. Thank you so much. That's an awesome introduction i really appreciate it. especially the part about being a terrible employee it's it's completely true i'm not good at doing what i'm told uh, <laughs> i've been told that by a number of bosses over the year which i understand is a hallmark of a natural born entrepreneur at least that's what my ego chooses to believe but don't you, today i'm here um, like i was telling you before the interview I'm, I'm on fire this morning i really am uh, we've been wanting to do this guru thing for a little while <clears throat> because of trends in the industry but i had an experience this morning uh where an agent bought something from a uh, guru online um that was wrong that, that guru should not have sold them that thing it was uh see they started last thursday the agent did and they bought a 1300 dollars soup to nuts business package and they've never sold anything in their life and they're looking at all the materials they got and saying well now what and the guru said oh you want implementation training Okay, well, that's going to be another $600 a month. And I got a little upset. So I adjusted my presentation just a little bit, folks, because I want to jump in here and really talk to you a little bit about the nature of what we're seeing, what you can do to identify problems, okay, and how you can do your own thinking. Okay, And, and doing your own thinking right now is tough because we're, we're all coming out of a, uh, a challenging period. I don't know if you all heard about this COVID thing. Okay, but it did affect the travel industry a little bit. And so we're all looking for answers, right? And so we have a lot of people coming forward saying, hey, I've got a shortcut for you. Well, here's the deal. Uh, I just turned 52, and I've been trying to find a shortcut for so long I can't tell you. They were going to hold me back in second or third grade because I was trying to figure out a shortcut to memorizing the multiplication tables. There is no shortcut. There is no shortcut. Okay, instant gratification is a myth uh, in most cases. Um, elbow grease is what counts. And it reminds me of something my grandma, my grandpa told me. My grandpa said, if, if you're not anticipating something, if you're not looking forward to something, then it has no value to you. Okay, you have to have some kind of value in something. Because when you value something, you'll put in the effort and the time to make that thing work. So there is no such thing as instant gratification. It requ life requires elbow grease. It needs some anticipation that will cause you to invest the effort and the time necessary to get the results that you want. 
Okay, so let, let's just understand right out of the gate. And I, I, I hate to overemphasize this, but I have to. There is no easy way. Folks, we are not kids anymore. Okay, the, the little toy that you get in that cereal box does not look like it did in the cartoons. We're not kids anymore. So we need to grow up a little bit. And when we see these things, it may be too good to, to be true. You need to stop for a second and like an adult, start asking some questions. I'm going to talk about that a little bit later on. But the bottom line is, folks, we're here to accomplish great things. Okay, we're not here to be the most average travel agent in the world. We're not here to be slightly above average, right? We're not here to be moderately neato to our clients. We're here to be exceptional. We're here to be experts. We're here to do amazing things. And there is no way to accomplish great things that bypasses the effort that you need to put into it. So, so just understand that. Now, a lot of times, effort is a function of time, right? We have to go in there and you have to put in the work. There is one shortcut in this world. There is one shortcut. It's money. And you get what you pay for, right? Well, I'll tell you this. Uh, outside agents is the least expensive host in the industry. And judging by our awards and our history, our track record, we're not under-delivering. So it's not always that, that more money makes something better. But oftentimes when we pay for something, we value it more, we use it more, we get out of it. So just, I want to encourage you throughout this presentation to, to rely on wisdom. And I'm going to go back to my grandpa again real quick. He had a saying. He said to me, son, uh, knowledge is knowing that a tomato is a fruit. Wisdom is not putting it in a, in a fruit salad. Okay, so what you're seeking to pay for is wisdom, not just knowledge. Stuff that's been applied, tested, vetted, it, it, it's real. That's what you're looking for and you're willing to pay money for. Everything else, you just want to check out and start asking questions. Okay, So we're in this period now where you have this inundation of gurus. Everybody in his sister, it seems like over the past eight weeks maybe, is suddenly uh, an expert. And they're going to sell you a sales funnel, funnel a script, a uh, lead magnet, whatever it is. That's uh, going to make you a millionaire travel agent just like it did the person selling it to you. That sounds like a problem, doesn't it? Let's take a look at that for a second. So why are there so many gurus right now? It's not that they're bad people, folks. Believe me, they're not bad people. Look, our motto here at OutsideAgents.com was don't look at the man behind the curtain. We were the Wizard of Oz, okay? We were trying to figure it out as we were getting started. I signed up our first agent. His name was Bob. I signed up our second agent. Her name was Leslie. Okay, we were faking it till we made it. So, so it's not necessarily... If there's anything wrong with becoming a guru, we just have to look at the path, the evolution that they took to get there. If one day they were a travel agent, the next day that they're, they're selling you a solution, you have to ask yourself why. Folks, likely it's because they're entrepreneurs at heart and they realized that travel was on the ropes here a year ago. And being entrepreneurs, what did they do? They pivoted just a bit. Okay? Instead of selling travel, they sold the secrets of selling travel. I get it. I get it. I totally understand that. So I'm not criticizing anybody. I'm not questioning anybody's intent. But I am suggesting that it may be that they were having trouble selling travel just like everybody else. And so they started selling how to sell travel. So we have to be careful about that. So I've been in the business a little over 20 years. Uh, my mom and dad own an agency. Steve's mom and dad own an agency. He's got about 30 years in the business. We're not pop-up gurus. We've been around. Okay. If, however, six months ago, I was selling travel, and today I'm over here, and I had paid uh, Joni an obscene amount of money to buy a webinar and all that great stuff. Would I be any more knowledgeable? No. No, I wouldn't. I would still be inexperienced. I would have knowledge. I would still lack, lack wisdom. Essentially, I think that many of these gurus saw fear and uncertainty as an opportunity. Again, I'm not saying anything wrong. What they saw was fear and uncertainty, and they felt that if they offered a solution to that, they were providing a valuable product at a reasonable price, and boom, everybody's happy, right? I mean, look at it. Joni, remember, I, I sold masks, okay? You know, masksfortravel.com, right? I remember, uh, I remember that. Yeah, we make our little adaptations. And, and by the way, I only had to sell 900,000 of those a month to, to make rent. But I understand the pivot, okay? I get that. But we have to understand where the pivot came from. It doesn't. Have, you don't have to have a whole lot of experience to sell masks. Maybe a little bit more experience is necessary to teach you how to sell travel. It's something you kind of want to think about. So when we're looking at these gurus, 
what do we need to look at to make sure we don't step in it, so to speak? Um, and what are those warning signs? There will be aware, especially if they're playing to fear or uncertainty. Okay. Did you know that over you know 13% of travel agencies are no longer in business today? Uh, and yet 85% of the agents that uh, are part of my program you know, have increased their revenue by 50%. Sounds good, doesn't it? Well, we don't know what those percentages represent. Maybe they have three agents. We don't know. Okay. We don't know what they're coming from, where they're coming from. What we know is that they are trying to sell us something that will help us balance our fears a little bit. Everybody wants to, to, to be not afraid, right? So it's a sales technique. Watch out for that. Similarly, watch out for, for organizations that are motivating with a false sense of scarcity or exclusivity. There's a guru out there, I will not use names, uh, but this guru um, professes to have, uh, she uses another, or they use another word, uh, but a master class kind of thing that they use. And they're only going to sign up 10 agents a year. Now, she claims to be a multi million dollar travel producer from just two years ago. So, if I do the math on that, 10 times what she's charging comes up as a fraction of what she's making as a travel agent. I have to wonder if that were, you know, the, the we're only signing up 10 agents thing is true or not. Or if it is true, how is she making up the additional money she's not making as a travel agent? It's probably by selling those people that come through that program additional products and services. I'm not saying that is the case, but it certainly might be the case, and therefore you need to question it. Another big one that, that this is just my approach, okay? And it has been forever. So outside agents, right? Uh, we make it easier. Part of our one of our slogans is we make it easier to leave than it was to sign up. It's a month-to-month -month deal. Come and go as you please. Again, my gramps had a, a huge influence on me. His, his, and he was a business owner. He said, I don't need contracts if I do good work. People keep on coming back. So I always watch out for people who up front on a blind purchase, on my first purchase, want me to commit to something for any period of time. There are circumstances where that is appropriate. But for me, it's always a warning sign that I need to ask some more questions. So what are some additional warning signs? Folks, I could draw you a list here of about 100 different warning signs, but I'm more about teaching you why than what. Okay, the why behind it is basic, you know, what 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 elements uh, set off your spidey sense, so to speak. Okay, well, first thing I want to tell you to do is pretend like this is a first date. Seriously, pretend like it's a first date. Listen to your gut. Listen to your instinct. If this ain't right, go. I'll be there. Listen to your gut. Another warning sign for me is too much polish, too much white space. Okay, if somebody has, that doesn't have, in searching and optimization, there's a ratio between images and text on a page that's important to hit. I would argue that the same is true with these coaches, mentors, gurus, okay, that there, there has to be substance on the page and not just pretty pictures and glossy finishes. That's, that's always a sign to me that I need to ask more questions. And finally, I'm going to go back to what I said about outsideagents.com. Okay, so our motto, no joke, was don't look at the man behind the curtain, okay, because I wore every hat in the place, okay, we were just trying to get started. There's a place for that. But I will tell you this, anytime, every time an agent said, you know, said, well, hey, let me look behind that curtain. What are you actually doing? I'd be happy to sit there with an hour and tell them exactly what we were lacking, what we had, what our advantages and what our disadvantages were. I was completely transparent. So transparency or a lack thereof is something you need to, to be hyper conscious of. Okay? Anybody who can tell you what to do but why, but not why to do it is renting you knowledge instead of selling you wisdom. They're renting you that knowledge instead of selling you the wisdom of to, to go do it yourself. So you want to benefit from their wisdom as well as their knowledge. And if you can't do both, again, you need to ask more questions. So what are some things to check? Experience. Experience. How long have they been around? 
Hey, do, do they have to have been in travel for 100 years? No. Maybe they've been on the vendor side. Maybe they've been in hospitality in general. Maybe they, they have to have been around the industry or, or the function that they're selling to you for some period of time. Okay. I, I, I've got a couple of degrees. I've read a bunch of books in my life. Okay. My grandpa, when I got my first degree, he's like, great. That and a buck and a half will get you a cup of coffee, boy. What are you going to do next? Okay. The education is the foundation. The experience is where the rubber hits the road. So ask yourself, are they experienced? And are they experienced in what? In what are they experienced? Next, okay, 53% of our agents increased during this, that, and you know, 96% of them doubled their sale, blah, 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 blah. Great, show me your data, please. I'd like to understand that, please. Uh, well, you can look at my referrals or my webpage. Look, John S. said you're awesome doesn't help me at all. It doesn't. I can go write my own John S. testimonials all day long. I'd like to see your data, please. I just got done with a meeting this morning with somebody. Uh, we have a lead generation program for agents. She's doing the marketing, and she was explaining to us all the data behind the results. Okay, so she was transparent. She was open. She was willing to show us the proof of her success and the degree of that success. So, folks, remember, not everything is win or lose. There's degrees of success, right? So, in this circumstance, we run the, this is our third campaign with her. The third one didn't go well by comparison to the, the first two. It's okay. That's fine. That's how marketing goes. So, she opened the hood, showed us the motor, and showed us the adjustments she made for the next race, basically. Uh, basically, there was some fluctuation in demand for Mexico, so she pivoted on over to another destination, and the results changed. That's the kind of data proof, uh, the substance that you want to see, because if, if you've got a whole ton of flash and no sizzle, you have a problem. Also, if that uh, guru is selling you a secret sauce, that's a problem. I worked in high-end restaurants in SoCal for a long time. The chef was happy to tell you the ingredients, happy to show you how to make it. And I can guarantee you eight times out of 10, you couldn't cook it yourself. It required a chef's skills. So when they're selling you a secret sauce and they're telling you that only my materials will work, only my content will work. I can't show you that content, but I'm gonna load it up for you. I'm gonna do it for you. It's gonna be magic. You're gonna have a great day. You need to ask yourself some more questions. You need to ask them some more questions. And then I have a particular peeve about people who regurgitate information like it's their own. Now we all regurgitate information. That's what school's for, right? When was the war of 1812? We regurgitate information. Everybody in Cicero can do that, okay? Can they repurpose it? Can they apply it? Can they extrapolate from it? Can they base other choices and decisions on it? That's far more important than the actual information itself. Look, it's like when I coach travel agents nowadays. When my mom and dad started their agency, it was a giant library. Two thirds of the thing was nothing but brochures and books. Information was scarce. My mom was the source, right? Now, information is abundant and we depend on people on travel agents to help us distill it. The same is true of coaches, mentors, and gurus. Okay, so if they're simply regurgitating other people's information, they can't back it up with their own analysis. That begs more questions from you. Okay, somebody needs to be able to tell you not just what, but why. And then, Joni, I think you're going to appreciate this. When it comes down to the bottom line, I trust my vibe off somebody. Your gut, your instinct, your soul, your heart, yourself, whatever you want to call it, will tell you things. And if you listen to it periodically, it'll probably serve you well. Pick up on that vibe. If it feels awkward, step back a second. Ease into that first date. Okay? If it just feels bad, don't go on the first date. If it feels okay, but not great, maybe a second day. It, it, you see what I'm saying? You're going to use that vibe, that feeling, that energy, that, that connection you have to make a decision. At the end of the day, between Steve and I, I think we have just about, we, we have an answer just about any question a travel agent can ask. Doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to like hearing it from him, him or I. Somebody else might, you might connect better with somebody else. And they might give you the same information. And you take it better, you receive it better, you apply it better. It'll be the same information. Vibe counts in a huge way. And then finally, 
and I'm going to throw this out there, and I, I might upset some of my competitors. Your host should be a major resource for you, in my opinion. You should be able to call up your host and say, hey, I saw someone so online. It seems like they got an amazing package. Do you guys know anything about them? Get some feedback. Hey, you guys are offering so-and-so as a featured speaker. Uh, why did you pick them to, to present? Okay, ask those questions. Talk to your host. Talk to the person who chose to put that person, that, that presenter in front of you and ask them why. Why are there, they there? For example, um, right now I'm doing a, the, what I call the, the Pro Series um, workshops and it features cool people in dirty boots. Andy Og being one of them. What are cool people in dirty boots? Uh, people have been there, done that, got the t-shirt, and their shoes are dirty. They're cool people, dirty boots. And that's why they're there. They walk the walk and can talk the talk. I don't care what degree they have. What I care about is their sincerity, the vibe, the content, that stuff. And they're there because I've judged them in my experience to, to be valuable to my agents. And that's why they're there. Not because I make a dime or a nickel on the back or 10 cents on a book or whatever it might be. They're there because they're cool people in dirty boots. So reach out to your host and get their insights. Now, they may say, I have no idea. I've never heard of that lady or that person. Okay, well, that might tell you something right there if they haven't heard of them. Okay. Or they might say, yeah, you know, we, we work with them and kind of, you know, don't do that anymore. Well, that might tell you something. But reach out to them and talk to them a little bit. Generally speaking, they should have an idea of who the major players are in this space, and they should be able to give you some advice. So now, how do you try to protect yourself from this stuff? I'm gonna give you a couple of suggestions for you, actually. Ask lots of questions. I think I've said that 33 times so far today. Ask lots of questions, 34, okay? You're in charge. You're the customer. You're the business professional. You are the entrepreneur. It's your right to ask those questions. Anybody who balks at your questions, you don't want to do business with. Real simple. Next, listen to your gut and instincts. I, I just can't emphasize that enough. I've been in business a long time. And I can do spreadsheets that make Einstein cry. I make two-thirds of my decisions based on instinct. I do the analysis, I do the research, and then I sit back, I have a conversation or two or three with the person, then I make that decision. So listen to your gut instincts. And then finally, I'm gonna reemphasize, talk to your host. I don't care if you are with outside agents or not, my extension is 210. If there's a guru that's haunting you, call me, I'll tell you what I think. Uh, I'll tell you that the honest answers are good, I'll tell you if they're bad, I'll tell you. If I don't know, I'll tell you. But your host should have your back. So at the end of the day, it's critical that you recognize the real deal. So I told you kind of what to watch out for, right? You know, as far as bad signs. So let's, let's talk a little bit about the things that you want to see. The first thing I'm going to tell you is sincerity and authenticity. Um, Steve and I have hung our hats for a couple decades now on the fact that my extension is 210, his 312. Anybody can call us anytime because we sincerely want you to succeed and we are authentically passionate about what we do and when you ask us questions and you tell us stuff we're going to be real with you no matter what that, that's our bottom line we're going to be real with you you might not like what you hear but you're going to get a sincere authentic answer to anything so sincerity authenticity is critical to any business relationship especially one where the relationship is based on them teaching you things, on coaching you, on directing you. The next thing I want to encourage, and this is going to be a tough one for some people, but behaves like a scientist. What does that mean? A scientist creates a hypothesis, puts an experiment, makes observations, draws a conclusion, and then publishes it to their peers to be torn apart. Think about that for a second. A scientist is judged by his peers. Okay? They're open to criticism. They're open 
your questions. They're open to people who say, well, hey, I did your experiment just like you did. I got different results. What do you think the cause is? You want people who are willing to think something through with you rather than just hand you a solution off the shelf. I promise you from the bottom of my heart to yours, from my soul to yours, if there was a 10 step plan to make anybody into a million dollar a year travel agent, I promise you, I would have written that book. I would have sold it. And I wouldn't be here right now because I'd be filthy rich. Okay. <laughs> there is no one plan, cookie cutter, that's going to work for everybody. So you need that scientific approach to look at each situation, take that feedback and modify the quote unquote experiment and do it again. They need to think like a scientist. Again, those scientists need to be cool people in dirty boots because cool people in dirty boots can understand the big picture. They've been there, done that, got the t-shirt. Now they may not be walking the same road that you are, but they've walked a similar one, which means that they can give you feedback and understanding just by virtue of perspective and experience. So think that all the way through. They have to understand the big picture, not just one aspect of it. This is something else that drives me nuts. Okay, so for you know X dollars, I'll send you 100 leads in 24 hours. Great, what kind of leads? How are you going to train me on that thing? What am I going to do with that lead? How am I going to close that? How am I going to manage the the uh, future si uh, sales cycle, uh, the remarketing effort, and so on and so forth? And a lot of good gurus will say, well, I, I drive leads, but you do them up to you. That's not the big picture. Okay, Maybe they don't know sales, but maybe they should know somebody to refer you to. They have to see the big picture. And they have to understand that there's processes and tasks. Okay, there, there's step by step step stuff that they're going to give you. Okay, that you know you don't want that to be all of it. But there's going to be step by step. And there's also processes that you're going to be able to to evolve and modify over time. So maybe they give you a series of four follow-up emails to a lead, right? They should be able to explain to you the process of those emails, why they they have the content they do, and why they're in the order that they're in. So that you can go replicate it yourself. Now, often you'll find that it's better to have a professional do it. It's just faster and easier. It really is because it's kind of hard sometimes. But at least they they can discern for you the difference between a task and a process, a box you can check, and a journey you're going to take. They need to be able to see the the big picture and processes relative to task. And then I'm going to toss something else in here for you. You have to be outside the box, right? Uh, people have said, uh, I've been out of my mind, out of, out of my box, out of all kinds of things. But I do it on purpose. They don't go with something just because it's new, just because it's different, just because it's outside of the box. A lot of times stuff are inside the box because they've earned their space inside that box. You know what I mean? They've been proven. They're in the box. This works. Okay, so just because it's outside of the box doesn't make it better or anything, but it needs to be there for a reason. And they, uh, the person that's working with you needs to be able to explain to you why they're outside of the box. And and look, ask anybody. I'm all about change and innovation and all that stuff. That's who I am. That's what I do. Okay. And over the decades, I've learned that there's sometimes that you just stay in the box. And if I'm going to go outside of the box, there has to be a good reason. And that is, in my opinion, what a true entrepreneur, true entrepreneur does. They go outside the box on purpose to recombine resources into a new product that has a value that's greater than the sum of its parts. At the end of the day, a guru has to be able to hold your hand and walk you down that path. So let me just kind of wrap it up for you. Lots of gurus out there. Lots of people with good stuff. Up to you to put your thinking hat on. Ask lots of questions. Be in control. Seek out people, cool people, in dirty boots. Okay? We've been there and done that. Got the, the t-shirt. And above all else, listen to yourself. Listen to yourself. Now with that, I am wide open for questions. What do we got? 
All right, here we go. So first of all, thank you. That was amazing. And it was so heartfelt. Um, it, thank you, Chad. That really, really, really hit home, uh, at least for me, and I'm sure for a lot of other folks. I think right now what some of us are doing is, you know, it, like you said, what's next? You know, we're thinking, okay, what what can we do to to fix things moving forward and make sure everything is great? But, you know, we don't want to frantically grab onto something, you know, just because it looks good. We got to make sure it is good. And this really, this is very timely, I think, for a lot of people because I think we're getting thrown a lot of offers for things to make our business grow really fast and that, but you know, make sure we do it the right way and make sure we get reputable people. It's so important. So thank you. I yeah. think your, your timing was awesome. Um, I wanted to share some things. There were some thoughts people shared, and then I do have a few questions. And for folks that have not put their questions in, feel free to type them in there and then we'll get to as many as we can. Um, somebody just said, you know, there were some interesting comments that I just wanted to share with you. So somebody says, I don't buy into social media packs with these gurus. What happened to being individual? <laughs> she says, I can throw, uh -huh. I can, it's true though, right? I can scroll like through Facebook best. and Instagram and see the same pictures with the same copy and it's a damn shame. So uh, that was it yeah, is. timely, right? It is. Again, <laughs> if they can't show you why, you know, they're only showing you what, that's a problem. To, yeah. to me, when we produce a social media pack, we do a 15 minute training on it. Why each of those images are there, why they should work and how you can do it yourself. Yeah, that's yeah exactly. That's important. <laughs> yeah. you can replicate what they did so somebody else made a comment too that says um i really feel sorry for my mom in my childhood because i was a why person <laughs> and <laughs> I, I get that you know my my granddaughter my three-year-old granddaughter lila why why grandma why <laughs> it's like Absolutely. i run out of answers sometimes but you know what at least she's asking it's this good stuff right so Absolutely. somebody else shared that the reason that they left their last host agency was because they were told they were asking too many questions Questions. What do you think of that? I could almost name the agency, and that's a shame. That is a shame, right? Um, for, for me, any business relationship is based on communication. Okay? On a given day, you may not like me on a given day, but that's just that day. You know what I mean? It, it's yeah. so challenging right now to um, well, just, just even be out there. Yeah, there we still have some fear. We're still a little tentative out there. You know, we don't, aren't sure where yeah. to put put our toe in the water we don't want to put our whole leg in there and drown you know so. yeah yes yeah. so and we want somebody that looks like they know what they're doing right yeah and we're going to gravitate towards them and that's not always the best way to go yeah yeah and somebody else mentioned too and you should know this that is this chad and steve are extremely authentic and great people which i already knew <laughs> that but i think that everybody needs to know that but is it really true that's one of the things about you chad when i when I, you know, met you first on, I mean, I don't even know how many years back we we're talking now, but it was a long time ago. And that was honestly, if I had to think back now on one of the things that I really felt about you, first of all, I felt you were really real. I mean, you weren't pulling any punches. You were straight open about things, um, not, you know, pretentious in any way. And I, you know, remember how authentic you were. And so that really, uh, that really hits home. So whoever, whoever put the post to that, thank that you. Sincerely. I thought that was, it's, I, I it's very true. Somebody had a question that any thoughts on having more than one host agency at the same time? Yeah. Um, so we've, we've got uh, more than a couple agents. Uh, what I found over the years is that in all but the, the rarest of situations, um, eventually people who have more than one host consolidate on one. It's just operationally easier than trying to remember where, what's booked and stuff like that. So the rare exceptions would be where you have a particular advantage with the vendor or a particular host or a special arrangement or something like that. For the most part, any host that you can talk to an owner about is going to be able to figure something out for you. So I'm not real, and this doesn't have anything to do with the fact that I own a host agency. We, I, I don't care if you've got 10 hosts. Do, do what you're going to do. This is your business, okay? My goal is to earn all of your business, and I typically do over time. But I have an advantage because it literally is just easier <laughs> to do all your business through one spot. I don't see any distinct advantage in having more than one host at this particular point. Okay, well, that's a good good advice. True. Um, somebody says that they see a ton of advice to create a lead magnet, and all of these involve additional costs to capture emails. The email. Personally, I'm super reluctant to give over my email. Boy, me too these days. <laughs> so I'm conflicted about this this advice. Any thoughts? 
Okay, so a couple things. Uh, first of all, giving out your email. Here's Chad's free tip of the day. Go get yourself a Gmail address. Address, okay? Uh, at the end of the part before the at symbol, you can put the, number, uh, the plus symbol and anything you want after it. It'll still go to your email box, but you can filter it by rules. So you could do Chad Burt plus 100, and that's my spam box, and I just put it in my spam box. It's like I go uh, sign up. Cool. So, Two, as it pertains to lead magnets and other kind of content, uh, we just deployed our uh, marketing exchange for travel agents. Uh, it's powered by the Travel Industry Marketing Association. So we have free social media packs, free lead magnets, free content, uh, almost 700 uh, really robust destination guides, all kinds of stuff that we're giving away. I would take a look at that stuff first before I went paying anybody a dime. Now, having said that, we have to look at the role that a lead magnet plays in your sales cycle. What is your goal from a given marketing campaign? Is it uh, future market acquisition emails? Okay, is that my primary goal? Okay, so I'm gonna maybe use a lead magnet to capture that. Is sales my primary goal? Okay, I'm probably not gonna use a lead magnet for that. I'm probably gonna use a, a robust landing page, right? So I would look around at the stuff that's already available for you and then see how it fitted in or fit in strategically with what you're trying to do overall look if i can pay somebody to draw to, to you know 50 bucks to, to make me a custom lead magnet and i can get 25 50 emails off that i'm so happy you have no idea a buck or two a client for a legit email address that somebody actually typed in and wasn't just a list you bought i'll pay that uh, i'll pay three times that all day so those lead magnets and other content, you know, bait, uh, link bait type of stuff um, has a role. You just have to put it where it belongs strategically. Does that make sense, Tony? Totally, totally. Absolutely. Makes tons of sense. So someone else says, I ha how how I can how can I get a customer without having to put out a lot of advertising cash? Boy, I <laughs> wouldn't that be we had an answer to that one. Um, but my new business does not have longevity. And I totally understand that. I mean, you know, she's just getting they're just getting started out. They don't have a track record. So, you know, financially investing, um, it, you know, you gotta really think about it. And so do you have any suggestions on that? So getting new clients with low budget. Okay. So and she's a new agent. You said? Yeah, no, it's a new agency. It says, yeah. Okay. So I'm going to just real quick, I'm going to do a little pep talk I've done about a billion times. Um, a, nation, a, a retail agency advertising at the national level, they between 350 and 450 bucks to get a complete stranger to buy from the first time. That's a national retail agency. Your price will be significantly less than that because your micro marketing instead of macro marketing but that's another topic but it's smaller targeting okay your second sale will cost you three dollars and fifty cents so think that through what does that mean for a, a new agency so you're front loading your your, your books your first year sucks uh, there's no other word to use it's empirically correct it sucks okay it's so true <laughs> you are trying to stack up people in your email list your direct mail list you're trying to get that client base such that in a year or two you have a thousand two thousand three thousand people on your list and when i drop an email blast my phone rings so you have to make that investment up front so for a new agency the first thing that you do is you go harvest your backyard friends family neighbors people at church da -da -da -da. why because you want a little bit of revenue coming in down the road Revenue is good, money is good, but your psychology, your mindset matters. So as you're spending money during these first three, six, nine, 12 months, you're getting sad. Okay, <laughs> you're not making money. It's just money out the window in your mind. Consciously, you may realize what you're doing, but internally, it's still painful. You're still giving things away. So you want to start that that revenue stream, you know, stacking up down the road because of the nature of the business, right? Then, as far as attracting those people you need to make one sale they need to start asking for referral business and once you have that money coming in then i'd go back to my host like if you've got any place from i want to say 20 to 100 bucks we can come up with a marketing plan to get you started and to be honest i, I can do it with zero dollars but i need to talk to you 
because as I said earlier, there is no one size fits all. A marketing solution that will knock me out of the park, will not necessarily knock you out of the park, Joni. You see what I'm saying? I, I need to sit down. Totally talk makes sense. And talk to you. I have to say, I think, Chad, that you're really a cool person in dirty boots. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I'm, I'm for now. <laughs> I love that. I love that analogy. So we got to have a couple more things. I'm just going to run fast, and then we'll go ahead and it looks like we're kind of coming to the end of the questions. So somebody said um, you already have, I know they're already with outside agents, which is cool. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. They just want to ask about the leads program, but I'm going to suggest that you're probably going to reach out to you independently, correct? Yeah, go, go ahead and reach out to me because we're, we're still in beta on that. We have lots of stuff coming. Okay. Um, but yeah, give me a holler. I'm happy to talk about it. Oh, that's cool. I maybe she thought maybe she thought it was already out or something. So that that could be for that question. And then somebody asked if you could just um, back up just a teeny bit and give your um, tip of the day about Gmail. Oh. <laughs> okay. Take any Gmail address. Okay. I'm going to use chadbert at gmail.com. Okay, that's not mine, but I'm saying. Okay, right, chadbert at gmail.com. I say g uh, chadbert plus one. The, the symbol plus the number one. That'll still go to Chad, chadbird at gmail.com. But the address will be different. So I can apply rules to who it was received from or to, excuse me, and filter my email that way. It put it into different folders and whatnot. But that way, like I've got a spam one, I've got a government one, I've got, I don't know, I've got about 13 different Gmail accounts. It's all the same email just different stuff after that plus symbol and that helps me filter and route stuff and so i don't have to have 15 million different email addresses all goes to one place awesome tip awesome okay so i think we got that for you linda and then um somebody says i love being with outside agents not only is the agency amazing but the network of other agents that i interact with on social media and through the outside agent forum are an invaluable resource. Well, wow, that's a testimonial. Okay, that's cool. Um, I love it. <laughs> somebody else said, um, okay, this is not a question. This is a good one for our final one for the day. Not okay. a question, but I'm only weeks into this business and all the social media advertisements makes you think you need to invest in all of the opportunities that are out there to grow your business. Thank you so much for this webinar. So I think what she's saying, I think what Petrina is saying is you were right on target with getting this out to her today so that she's uh, going to be yeah. a little more cautious what, about spending these next steps. What was her name again? What was her oh, name? wait a minute. Um, I don't have it in front of me anymore because it goes away when I... Did I say Katrina? The, the, the last one that I think it was Katrina. Uh, Katrina. It's something that's important to remember. I'm not. I'm not telling you guys. Katrina. Katrina. P A T R I N. Katrina. Okay. Yes. I'm not telling you to not invest. I'm just telling you to know the difference. Uh, you know, between fruits and vegetables. You know, apply a little wisdom to it. In your situation, you're being bombarded, right? And maybe you have a budget that will allow you to participate in one or two of these, but not all ten that you're being hit with, right? Pick one or two, but be a scientist. Ask the questions. Examine the why. Take a look at the results. Determine causation. See if you can duplicate or replicate what they did. So it, I'm not telling you not to do it. I'm telling you just do it intelligently and make sure you get everything possible out of it. Perfect. Good way to good way to end that. All right, so we have um, a couple of prizes to give away. So I think we'll do that if you, unless you have something else you wanted to share there, no. Chad. Are we good? No, no, I'm excited. All right. Um, so first one is, and what's going to happen, folks, is for those of you who've been on our webinars before, you kind of know the drill. But for those of you who have not, all you're going to do is type your answer as quickly as you possibly can, or when you know it, um, over in the right-hand side of your screen where you see questions, where some of you have already been putting questions. You're going to type that answer in there, and I'm going to take the fifth correct answer of each of these questions. We're going to do them one at a time, and then I will announce that, and we'll know who's going to win. So. First one is, who is, who's outside agent's hero? <laughs> Sorry, I'm laughing, this is awesome. Um, it's not the answer, um, Chad, that you gave me. <laughs> Uh oh, and that uh -oh. Is, that and a lot of people have answered, but that is not even on here. So um, I'm going to take the fifth one of what I think would be the right answer for here. Okay, so okay. Um, <laughs> the uh, fifth one is I got to count here. One. 
<laughs> I'm going to read you some of these in a minute because they're too funny. Okay. okay. So the first one that I'm going to pick who wins this is the fifth one that answered this answer. And the answer they gave was Chad, which I totally love. <laughs> that is so perfect. But Chad, so many people did that. It's unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awesome. That's so cool. <laughs> I love it. All right. Um, so that was that was awesome. Okay, so Lashinda, Henry, you have won, and I will send your information um to Chad so they have that. So you've won the consultation with um Chad and Steve. A couple of the other answers were pretty funny though. Somebody said mom. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> <Questions excellent. for laughs> so those were some those were some of the good questions, good answers well, to the story for you real quick. So I don't know if everybody knows who Rosie the Riveter was, but she was real popular in World War Two. My grandma was a river and my gramps flew on a B-17. She was riveting B-17s and the Air Force wouldn't let him communicate while she was doing that. And I asked her, I said, Grandma, why do you go do that? They didn't let you talk to gramps for a year while he was fighting. And she said, I want to make sure that plane was put together right. And so Rosie the Riveter to me kind of became this symbol of somebody who wants to work because it needs to be done. So that's okay. that's why. Well, Rosie would have right been a good here. answer, but I liked you better. Okay, so <laughs> now well, we're going to go on to number two. Okay, uh, so folks, we're going to have to you have to put these all on one line, or as you're typing them in there. So get ready. Name one. You just have only have to name one of the three. One of the three things that you are that are most important things that we've learned today. And it's not Chad, so don't answer that one. I'm going to take the fifth correct answer. Okay. So the answer that I'm going to give is um, we had three options, but the fifth person mm -hmm. that gave the first correct answer um, answered ask questions. And the, your answers to these questions were communications, grit, and authenticity. And that was the actual answer that Chad provided to me. I think ask questions is communication. So um, a lot of people posted ask questions. And so Rebecca you, you Asher, gonna, you are the winner. Real quick, I want to extend that. I want to extend that. Communication is about grit and authenticity too. It's tough to communicate sometimes. Totally. It's tough to get out there. So you know, just understand when, when you, you say communication to me, it's a big, big thing. It's not just talking. So these answers are like, seriously, a webinar in themselves. Okay, so I have to read a few of them. You guys are, you guys on this webinar are amazing. Okay, so somebody says, marketing, ask questions, be a scientist. <laughs> okay. I love that. Uh, host agency, ask questions, uh, trust your instincts. Oh boy, that's like my favorite. I am the, tr I'm the trust your gut girl. Um, Wisdom, filter your Gmail. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Um, be smart about using your money. Yes. Find good people in dirty boots. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Watch for warning that. signs. Uh, responsiveness and integrity. Behave like a scientist. Ask why. And again, Connie Miller says, trust your gut. Oh, that's awesome. You guys, uh, this was a wonderful audience. I got to tell you, Chad. I love it. These, I really do. These I folks are on fire today. This is great. Well, this has been wonderful. Um, Rebecca and Lashenda, I'll be able to send this information off so you'll get your um, prize. And Rebecca, what you won was a copy of our book, uh, Digital Marketing. So we'll get that off to you as well. So Chad, I can't even thank you enough. What a fun, but such uh, on point um, presentation today um, that I think we all really needed. And uh, thank you for that. I really appreciate it. Not a problem. Give me a call anytime. Anybody, I'm here, even if you're not with us. Uh, I'm out to bust some gurus. Let me know. You he does. Help, okay? He does. Uh, yeah, guru buster. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> all right, you guys, thank everybody take much. care. Have a wonderful rest of your week. And thanks again, Chad. Great. Thanks.